Okay. Good morning, once again. Back once again. Today, uh, we will discuss about one of the new chapters from your ICC syllabus. It's organic chemistry. Now, first of all, let us understand uh, why organic chemistry. Why is it required? That's more important for us. Why is it required? A special branch of chemistry is required. See, when we are talking about chemistry, we broadly divide chemistry into three segments. Physical chemistry, inorganic chemistry, and organic chemistry. Physical chemistry, inorganic chemistry, you are aware of it. You have studied. Now, what is organic chemistry? It's a special branch of chemistry which deals with specifically carbon and its compounds. Carbon and its compounds. The question comes, what is so unique about carbon? There are special branch of chemistry as we did here. Right? See, there are approximately 4 to 5 million carbon compounds. 4 to 5 million carbon compounds and 1000 more are discovered every year. So a specific, systematic way of studying this carbon and its compounds is different. So, a special branch of chemistry was introduced, which includes carbon and its compounds, means study of carbon compounds. Now when we are discussing about this one, this one, please remember compounds such as carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, carbonic acid, the carbonates, these do not fall into the branch of organic chemistry. It deals with carbon with few specific properties. Why is it so? Now let us understand what is so unique about carbon that a special branch of chemistry was required. Right now, our matter of interest is carbon. Symbol C. Electronic configuration 2 comma 4. That means it has got 4 electrons in the outermost shell. Please start understanding what is the position of carbon in the periodic table. It is in period to group 4A or 4 Right? Got it? So this is the position of carbon. Now let us understand what is so unique about this. When we are considering carbon, let's see the electronic configuration of carbon Carbon, electronic configuration is 2,4. That means carbon has got 4 electrons in its alpha motion. Is it satisfied? Following the octet rule? No. So it has to be satisfied with 4 more electrons. So why if a hydrogen comes over here, if a hydrogen comes over here, if a hydrogen comes over here, all these hydrogen coming with one more electron. So what happens? Ultimately, this carbon gets each electron satisfied with the octet, and this hydrogen gets satisfied forming four covalent bonds. Forming four covalent bonds. So we can consider these four electrons of carbon being four arms. We are considering carbon having four arms. So it can catch up the hydrogens from here. One here, one here, one here, one here. So this is what is formed is CH4, a compound of carbon and hydrogen, which is hydrocarbon. A compound of carbon and hydrogen, which is hydrocarbon. The name you all know. Methane. So what? What makes carbon so unique? This is what makes carbon so unique. There are two specific properties which makes carbon very very unique. Let us understand these two properties now. One. The properties which make carbon so unique is number one, tetravalency. Number two, Catenation. What makes unique? Two properties which make carbon unique is number one, tetravalency, tetravalency, and number two, catenation. 
tetracurrency and catenation. Now what is so important? Tetra means pole. Valence in carbon means four over here. See, because of this four electrons in the outermost shell, it could develop four arms to catch up four hydrogens. Uh, not only hydrogens, we'll understand something more over here. So tetra means having four electrons in the outermost shell, that is tetra valence, which makes it very unique. Moreover, let us understand about catenation. What is catenation? Catenation is a property when there is a self-linking property of an element. Let us understand this one in a very, very simple way. Very, very simple way we need to understand. We will understand about catenation. Catenation. I say what? Catenation means self-linking property. Catenation means what? Self-linking property. Let's understand how. I just know scope that carbon has got four electrons in the outer portion. This means what? It can take up four hydrogens forming four covalent bonds. So we are considering that carbon has got four arms. This is what we discussed right now. So we are considering carbon has got four arms where the hydrogens are attached to it by covalent bonds. Right? Now let's come up to a different process. Suppose four hydrogens are not together, then what would have happened? Let's see. So this was the original molecule. My original molecule was CH4. But this hydrogen is not available. Now what? This electron remains vacant over here. So it is CS3 with one electron empty. There is another molecule which has formed and formed in this way. And this CS3 is there and electron is vacant. Now carbon has got a specific property of linking with each other. Self-linking property, catenation. Due to the self-linking property, it can form long genes. Please remember, carbon will have always four arms. Carbon, one, two, three, four. Carbon, one, two, three, four. Right? So I just say like this. Carbon, it linked with another carbon over here. Just count the arms. Carbon 1, 2, 3, 4. Carbon 1, 2, 3, 4. If this hydrogen is not available, another carbon over here, another carbon over here, another carbon over here. It goes on. Just see now. Now what is happening? You can see the long chain that is formed. So, this is what is very unique in carbon. That means it forms long chain. Because of what? Because of self-linking property. Because of catenation. See, it's not necessary. The chain will be like this. It can be here also. Are you getting me? It can be anywhere. It can be here also. So, different types of chains can be formed. It can form straight chain compounds, it can form branch chain compounds, it can form closed chain compounds, you can see several types of compounds formed. So because of this catenation, self-linking property, carbon can form so, so many compounds. Now, uh, see, when we are talking about self-linking, is it necessary that a carbon can only form single type of bond? Not so. Let's see how. It's not necessary that each will be forming only single bond. So it forms a single bonded compound. If it is like this, these 
that leaves are not available. Then what happens? This is empty. This and this is empty. Bonds with each other. It forms a double bonded compound. If it is like this, these electrons are empty, not bonded. Then what happens? They link with each other. So ultimately leading to the formation of triple bond. So it forms single bond, it forms double bond, it forms triple bond. So we are talking about catenation and self-linking property. Please understand. It can form single bonded, long genes, it can form double bonded, it can form triple bonded compounds. I was just talking about closed chain compounds also. See, what is the self-linking property doing? When we are talking about closed chain compounds, it can be single bonded, it can be double bonded, it can be triple bonded. There are so, so many compounds available then because of this property. Let's see. Carbon over here, linked with this one, 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 linked with this one. Let's see. Remember, all the carbons have got four arms. Count each carbon. Carbon 1, 2, 3, 4. Carbon 1, 2, 3, 4. Carbon 1, 2, 3, 4. Or this is a closed chain compound. This is a closed chain compound. So we understood due to this self looking property, it can form straight chain compounds, branch chain compounds, closed chain compounds, several, several thousands of compounds. Two specific properties we studied today. One is tetravalency, second is scatenation, which makes carbon very unique. Now we will come up to understand that a different topic, we will understand how we will divide these compounds. Let's understand or we can see the division of this. So we understood two properties. I hope you understood these two properties of carbon. Now let's understand this unique nature of carbon. When carbon bonds with hydrogen, we call that one as hydrocarbons. How do we divide hydrocarbons? It's not necessary to bond only with carbon, hydrogen. It can bond with other elements also. But we are specifically discussing about hydrogen. What is the industry this? So hydrocarbons means what? Compounds of carbon and hydrogen can be broadly divided into two types. Open change open chain compounds and we can this one as Close chain compounds. So we understood hydrocarbons are broadly divided as open chain compounds, closed chain compounds. These open chain compounds are known as aliphatic compounds. And the closed chain compounds are known as cyclic compounds. So we are just uh, dividing the hydrocarbons into two types, open chain compounds and closed chain compounds. So open chain means is not closed, long genes, any type of genes. Now, the aliphatic compounds are further divided into two types, saturated compounds and unsaturated compounds. Saturated compounds. What are saturated compounds? Saturated compounds are the one with single bond. They are known as alkenes. We will discuss about all these things. Don't worry. We will discuss about these things. Don't worry. 
So, hydrocarbons divided into two types, open chain compounds, which are known as alveolic compounds, closed chain compounds, which are known as cyclic compounds. The open chain compounds are further divided into saturated compounds and unsaturated compounds. Saturated compounds are the single bonded compounds, which are also known as alkenes. The unsaturated compounds are the double bonded, double bonded, or the triple bonded compounds. Double bonded compounds or the triple bonded compounds. They are known as alkenes or known as alkynes. So alkenes, alkynes. Right? We are discussing very less about this part. You can see. It's not in the I'll discuss a very little of it. So hydrocarbons, open gene, elevated compounds, and these are known as open gene compounds. Saturated, unsaturated, saturated compounds are the single bonded compounds, unsaturated compounds are the double and the triple bonded compounds. They are also known as alkenes and alkynes. Now, coming to the cyclic compounds, though it is not in syllabus, we can say this one has in two divisions. Please, not in syllabus, not in syllabus. This part. Okay? Now, closed chain compounds, that means the cyclic compounds, are further divided into homocyclic and heterocyclic. Homo cyclic and heterocyclic. Homocyclic means which contains only carbon. They contain, and heterocyclic means they contain carbon, oxygen, sulfur, other elements are also present in it. So we are not discussing about this part, we are discussing more about this part. So I hope you understood, saturated and unsaturated. Now our part of discussion will be saturated hydrocarbon and unsaturated hydrocarbon. Let us just talk about saturated hydrocarbon and unsaturated hydrocarbons. Make sure you revise this one on regular basis. If you don't revise, organic chemistry on regular basis.